once we've created a box plot, of course, our next step is to talk about interpreting that box plot, explaining what it means, what it depicts, and again, focusing on doing that in the context of the data. So just like when we were talking about histograms, we can still talk about shape, center, spread, and outliers. Just like we did, again, with histograms. The five number summary takes care of our center, which again is that value Q2 or the median and our spread. Because once we have that five number summary, we have Q3, we can subtract Q1 and get that interquartile range. So the five number summary is gonna take care of those values for us. What we need then to discuss in addition are the existence of any outliers or to state that there are none and identify the shape of our distribution. So just like histograms, we can still have symmetric right skewed and left skewed distributions. We can still recognize when those dis different distributions are occurring. So for instance, in our first graph, we have something that's relatively symmetric. The lines extending out of either end of that box plot are in this case, probably identical or at least close to being the same. So we can have a symmetric distribution or an approximately symmetric distribution. If we have one of those lines longer than the other, then we're looking at a skewed distribution. And in this case, this is the same idea of the tail of the histogram. So we have that longer portion pointed off to the right. So this would be an example of a right skewed box plot. Because again, we're talking about where do we have those fewer values occurring? The bulk of our values are occurring in that inner quartile range. And then we have fewer as we start to get into these lines that extend out. And then as that line extends to the left, so we're getting values on the low end that are occurring with less frequency. Now we have a left skewed distribution. And again, there will be some room for interpretation. How different do the lengths of those lines on either side have to be before something stops being symmetric? Um, so that will be up to you as the reporter to provide some of that interpretation to your reader. So now what we want to do is interpret the box plots we just generated. Something that's helpful for doing this is to first generate that five number summary and some of the different measures that we talked about uh, when we talked about calculating center, spread, minimum and maximum usual values. So looking back at your notes, you should be able to generate the minimum value, which is 6, Q1, which is 13, the median of 23, Q3, which would be 31, and the maximum value, which would be 51. You could also generate the inner quartile range, which in this case would be 18. So most of this can be generated, or all of these in this case, can be generated using that summary stats feature in StatCrunch. So by selecting Q1, Median, Q3, IQR, and actually maybe two that we haven't looked at but are in that same list, you can select Minimum and Maximum. In example two, or example four here, where we're looking at our graph from example two, you can generate the exact same values so Q1 will be 15.5, our median will be 24, Q3 will be 41. Our minimum value, which is represented by that left fence, would be 12. And the maximum value that you would generate from that summary stats list would actually be this outlier of 104. We can also generate the IQR which would be 25.5. And then to get this maximum usual value, again, you'll go back to that maximum and minimum usual value calculator. You'll input the values for Q1 and Q3, and you should be able to generate this to be 79.25. So let's go ahead and generate 
um, some interpretations for these different results. And again, thinking about interpreting shape, center, spread, and outliers. So in this case, when we're looking at our graph of Chicago Bears points per game, the box plot is right skewed. Since again, we have that longer tail or that longer line extending off to the right. So our box plot is right skewed, meaning the Bears had fewer games where they scored higher numbers of points. Oops, sorry about that. Where they scored higher numbers of points. The median in this case, or the center, is 23, meaning they scored on average, again, using average to refer to either median or mean, whichever is appropriate for the, the data we're considering. So in this case, for box plots, we're talking about the median, meaning they scored on average 23 points per game. The IQR is 18, meaning there is a moderate amount of spread or variability in the number of points they scored per game. That would be a little bit up to interpretation. Is 18 a large amount of spread, a little amount of spread? 18 points is more than two touchdowns, so let's say a moderate, I don't know about extreme, but there's some room for interpretation there. So a moderate amount of spread in the number of points that they scored per game. And in this graph, there are no outliers. So the Bears never scored an unusually high or low number of points per game in any game that season. So had there been any outliers, there would have been at least one game where they had an unusually high number of points, an unusually low number of points. But in this case, they were all within a usual or expected range based off the rest of the data. For our box plot that we generated in example two, we can look at doing the exact same thing. We want to interpret this box plot. Again, the shape is right skewed, meaning few countries won high numbers of medals. The median is 24. meaning countries won on average 24 medals, or meaning countries typically earn 24 medals. The IQR is 25.5 medals, so there's a wide range in the number of medals won per country. And in this case, there are three outliers, meaning three countries won an unusually high number of medals. To be a little more thorough there, then we could go back and look at which of those three, what three countries were those. So which country earned the 104 medals and those other two outlier values. I won't include those here, but that would be a good thing to include in your own written interpretations of any box plot to, again, be very specific, making the information as accessible as possible to your audience or to your reader.